to access free topic sheets, worksheets or to book an online class, visit ilearneasy.co.uk. Animal cells have irregular shapes. They contain a nucleus, cell membrane, cytoplasm, mitochondria and ribosomes. The nucleus contains genetic material. This controls the cell's activities. The cell membrane controls the movement of substances that go in and out of the cell. It's able to do this because it has a structure that is permeable to some substances and not others. You can think of it as a gatekeeper. The cytoplasm is a jelly-like material that contains nutrients, salts and other membrane-bound organelles. Many chemical reactions also occur in the cytoplasm. For example, the chemical reaction of respiration in mitochondria. Mitochondria are known as the powerhouses of the cell. They contain enzymes for aerobic respiration and this is where most energy is released from respiration. Ribosomes are small organelles found in the cytoplasm where protein synthesis occurs. Now we have learnt the basic structure of animal cells. It's important to remember that not all animal cells look the same. The reason for this is because animal cells are specialised for their functions. For example, red blood cells. These cells have a biconcave shape and no nucleus. The reason for this is because it provides a larger surface area in order for the red blood cells to absorb and to carry oxygen in the blood. They also have no nucleus. They are also small and flexible so they can be carried through blood vessels. Sperm cells Sperm cells function is to transfer genes from a male's body to a female gamete. Sperm cells have a tail which allows them to swim towards the egg cell and it contains many mitochondria to supply ATP for energy. The head of a sperm cell also contains enzymes. These enzymes are released to help break through the outer membrane of egg cells. Vertebrate Invertebrate Vertebrates are animals with a backbone. For example, elephants. Invertebrates are animals without a backbone. For example, jellyfish. All living things can be put into three main groups. Animals, plants and microorganisms. They have different key features that help us to differentiate between them. For example, animals can't produce their own food. They get their energy by eating other animals or plants. Plants can produce their own food. And microorganisms are very small. In this video, we will look at the animal group. Animals can either be vertebrates or invertebrates. Vertebrates are animals that have a backbone. Invertebrates are animals that don't have a backbone. There are five groups of vertebrates. Mammals, birds, reptiles, amphibians and fish. Mammals have body hair or fur. They use their lungs to breathe. Mammals are born live and they drink milk. A mammal's body temperature is usually stable, therefore they are warm-blooded animals. An example of a mammal is a lion. Birds Birds have feathers and they use their lungs to breathe. Birds lay eggs and their temperature is usually stable. Therefore, they are warm-blooded animals. For example, an eagle. 
Reptiles have scales. They use their lungs to breathe. Reptiles also lay eggs and their body temperature changes. Therefore, they are cold-blooded animals. For example, a snake. Amphibians have damp skin. First, they use their gills to breathe and then lungs. Amphibians lay soft eggs in water and their body temperature changes. Therefore, they are cold-blooded animals. For example, a frog. Fish have scales and they use their gills to breathe. Fish lay soft eggs in water and their temperature changes. Therefore, they are cold-blooded animals. There are also different types of invertebrates which we can put into groups. For example, invertebrates with six legs, invertebrates with more than six legs, invertebrates without legs. Invertebrates without legs can be grouped into worm-like or not worm-like. The six groups are mollusks, arthropods, worms, cnidarians, echnoderms, sponges, mollusks. There are many different types of mollusks. Some have shells for protection and others don't. For example, snails, squid and oysters. Arthropods live on land. There are many different types of arthropods. For example, ants, spiders, crabs, millipedes. Arthropods can have different numbers of jointed legs. Some have six, some have eight, some have ten, and some have even more than ten. They also have an exoskeleton. Worms have a long soft body and moist skin. The jellyfish group is also known as cnidarians. These are marine animals that usually have tentacles with stinging cells. They use these to capture food. Examples are jellyfish and polyp. Echnoderms. Echnoderms are marine animals, for example, starfish. Sponges are also known as peripherans. These invertebrates are found in deep water and they have pores and can't swim. Herbivores, carnivores, omnivores. In this lesson, we will learn the difference between these three words. Herbivores. Herbivores are animals that eat plants. For example, sheep eat plants. Therefore, they are herbivores. Carnivores. Carnivores are animals that eat meat. For example, lions eat only meat. Therefore, they are carnivores. Omnivores are animals that eat both plants and meat. For example, bears eat plants and animals. Therefore, they are omnivores. Warm-blooded, cold-blooded. Warm-blooded animals are able to maintain a nearly constant body temperature regardless of the temperature of the environment. Mammals and birds are warm-blooded animals. When the temperature of the environment is cold, warm-blooded animals are able to generate heat from the energy in the food they consume. When the temperature of the environment is hot, warm-blooded animals are able to cool down by sweating. Cold-blooded animals 
aren't able to maintain a constant body temperature. Their temperature changes according to the temperature of the environment. Therefore, these animals are unable to survive in extreme temperatures. Reptiles, amphibians and fish are groups of cold-blooded animals. Living things can be classified into five groups. These are called kingdoms. Each kingdom contains organisms that have similar characteristics. The five kingdoms are animals, plants, fungi, bacteria, protists. Animals are multicellular organisms. They feed on other living things. Plants are multicellular organisms. They make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Fungi. These cells can be unicellular or multicellular. For example, mushrooms, yeast. They can't produce their own food. Instead, they feed on organic matter. Bacteria. These are unicellular organisms. Bacteria is found everywhere. Protists. These are mainly unicellular organisms that live in water. For example, algae and chlorella. Some produce their own food or get food from the environment. Animal life cycles. The life cycle of an animal is the journey from the start of its life all the way to the end of its life, or to the point where the animal has babies and new life is formed. In this video, we will look at the life cycle of insects, amphibians, birds, and mammals. Insect life cycle. First, the insect lays eggs. Larva is an immature form of an insect. It hatches from the eggs. Larva then becomes a pupa and it changes into an adult insect. For example, a butterfly. First, the butterfly lays eggs on the leaves of a plant. Inside the eggs, caterpillars begin to grow. When the caterpillar is large enough, it leaves the egg by eating it. Now, the caterpillar has fully grown, it forms itself into a pupa. This is a type of vessel in which the caterpillar changes into a butterfly. Once the butterfly is ready, the pupa splits open and the butterfly leaves and flies away. Amphibian life cycle. First, eggs are laid in the water. The amphibian begins to develop in the eggs. The amphibian hatches from the eggs and continues to grow and adapt in the water until they are adults. For example, a frog. First, an adult frog lays hundreds of tiny eggs in the water. A tadpole begins to form in the egg. After a few weeks, the tadpole hatches. The tadpole does not have any legs yet. So, after a few weeks, they grow their back legs and then their front legs. Its tail shrinks away and the baby frog emerges out of the water. The baby frog continues to grow into an adult frog. Bird life cycle. First, the bird lays eggs in a nest. The baby bird develops in the egg. Once it has developed, it will begin to crack the egg in order to get out of it. The chick continues to grow until adulthood. For example, 
a chicken. So first, the chicken lays an egg. The chick inside the egg begins to grow. Once it has fully developed, it cracks the egg open and gets out of it. Mammal life cycle. This takes place inside the body of a female. A fertilized egg develops into an embryo and then a fetus. The female then gives birth to the baby. A human baby then goes through the life stages of childhood, adolescence, adulthood and then old age. Food chains. All living things need energy to survive. Living things get their energy from different places. Plants are known as producers. This means that they make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Animals are known as consumers. This means that they get their nutrition by eating other living things, such as other animals or plants. An animal that eats another animal is called a predator. The animal they eat is called prey. So, predators eat prey. A food chain shows us how plants and animals depend on each other for food. The energy in the food passes along the food chain. Food chains usually begin with a plant and end with a large animal. So, we begin with the producers. The primary consumers are the animals that eat the plants. The secondary consumers are the animals that eat the primary consumers. The tertiary consumers are the animals that eat the secondary consumers. When all living things die, decomposers feed on them. Examples of decomposers are bacteria, fungi, beetles, etc. Now let's look at some examples. Plants, rabbit, fox, lion. So here is a food chain. The rabbit eats the plants. The fox eats the rabbit. The lion eats the fox. The plants are the producers. The rabbit is the primary consumer. The fox is the secondary consumer. The lion is the tertiary consumer. Another example is algae, small fish, bigger fish, sea lion, sharks. The small fish eat the algae. The bigger fish eat the small fish. The sea lion eats the bigger fish. The sharks eat the sea lions. Algae is the producer. Small fish are the primary consumers. Bigger fish are the secondary consumers. Sea lions are the tertiary consumers. Sharks are the quaternary consumers. All living things need energy to survive. Living things get their energy from different places. Plants are known as producers. This means that they make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Animals are known as consumers. This means that they get their nutrition by eating other living things, such as other animals or plants. An animal that eats another animal is called a predator. The animal they eat 
is called prey. So, predators eat prey. A food chain shows us how plants and animals depend on each other for food. The energy in the food passes along the food chain. Food chains usually begin with a plant and end with a large animal. So, we begin with the producers. The primary consumers are the animals that eat the plants. The secondary consumers are the animals that eat the primary consumers. The tertiary consumers are the animals that eat the secondary consumers. When all living things die, decomposers feed on them. Examples of decomposers are bacteria, fungi, beetles, etc.